Hello and welcome to the very first edition of Omni Commentary, where we sit down and uh, kind of do a little commentary track of some of our past projects and hopefully talk about some future ones. Uh, my name is Nick Dahlhoff. I was one of the writers and directors of St. Nick, the project we're going to be talking about here. Joining me today, as I introduce him in my PR voice, is uh, Mitchell Reby. Hello, hello. This is a pretty fun project, actually, Nick. I was pretty happy. Well, first, you pitched it to us quite a while ago. Or, well, obviously, it was a long time ago, but... Well, it was even before, like we even started writing. You you pitched me the idea. Yeah, we we learned later on that we had talked about this idea even longer than we had thought. Because I thought I had brought it to you fall twenty twenty. Was kind of, and then it was like later on, like November was when we started getting serious about it. And then it wasn't till like later on we found out, like no, we I actually pitched you this way back in like early 2020 and then we just kind of forgot about it for a while and yeah so then it uh, yeah it was basically about eight months of pr- uh, right. pre-production and about one month of uh production and post-production i don't know how often that happens but uh it, it, it's how that worked here well you know you put enough time in pre-production you don't have to spend that much time in actual production and post-production yeah, plan yeah. it all out yeah i guess you spent eight months planning you know <laughs> you hope that second yeah. third part just go by <laughs> but it was it was super fun um the writing part for me was really fun trying to get all the you know the the quips and the 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 one-liners that matt and kyle and sal had and just making sure that still like flowed with the whole storyline we had going and just seeing that creative process. Because from my standpoint, I never really took a like script writing class. So that was kind of my first dive into script writing. It was a very fun experience. Yeah. One, one of the great things for me, actually, I would say one of the reasons why it took us so long and why it took me so long to pitch it is I, I don't like, pitching something that I don't have a hundred percent idea where at least it's going. And for the longest time with this project, I just didn't know how to end it. You know, I had a pretty good idea at the beginning. I had a pretty good idea of what kind of stuff to happen in the middle, but I just never knew how to end it. And so the one day when I finally told you guys this and we started brainstorming a little bit, it it was you guys who like kind of came up with the ending finally. And I was like, Oh my God, that's perfect. Why didn't I think of that? And that's what finally kind of made this project happen. So you can't do it all on your own, I guess, despite me always trying to. Right. Group work sucks until it doesn't. Yeah. Until you get the right group. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we but then, then they all leave and then, you know, you, you got to find another group. Uh, sounds like you're dealing with some other personal issues there, Mitch, which we don't have time to get into. But uh, let's get into the video <laughs> itself. Uh, this is the YouTube edit. We did do uh, sort of an edited version that we've been entering in a few like online, like YouTube film festivals, nothing too fancy, but this is the YouTube edit. So we'll be talking about some of the scenes that we kind of cut and changed up a little bit as well as some behind the scenes story. So here we go. Oh man, that title screen is great. Yeah, that's yeah. Right off the bat, I Whoever am not. The font is just yeah. I I am not good at graphics at all. So when I first came up with the first draft, um, I literally had what was called the basic font. Um, that's not an over exaggeration. It's literally just called basic. And Mitch came in one day to help with the post production and looked at that. He's like, "Are we gonna Are we gonna change that?" And I was like, "I don't I don't really plan to." And Mitch gave me this like stink eye, and I was like, "But if you want to, f- feel free to go at it." But yeah, I probably gave off a look of like, "Really, we're not gonna change this. Yeah. This is a comedy horror spoof. We're not gonna go with the basic quote unquote font here, like." And again, I'm not I'm not exaggerating that. It's literally just called basic. Do, it, yeah. It was I was like, oh God, we need to go pick a different font. 
And then, of course, all the fonts we looked at looked at on Final Cut, because that's what we did the project on, right? It was Final Cut. Yeah, yeah, this one was on Final Cut. Because yeah. we looked at all the fonts on Final Cut, and there was no, like, genre of horror that we were really vibing with. So we had to go spend the next 20 minutes going online, scrolling through, like, I don't know how many we scrolled through, like, 100? 100, 100, 100 I mean, you, you did. I left that all on, on you. That one. And I like what we did with the green and red. I think that was... I was partially you. I did. I just wanted. To I, I contributed to the graphics. Missing something. I knew it needed something. Yep. <laughs> exactly. All right. Let's keep going. Beautiful title sequence. That's all I gotta say about that. I mean, not only does he think Santa's real, he thinks he's some kind of supernatural demon. I mean, I thought Santa I was real. Was like yeah you could see me and yeah, mitch hiding like, in the windows there you ever at the think door he was some kind of supernatural entity though uh, well no i'm waiting for my cue I'm tell him eventually actually you are congratulated obligated to hunt santa claus love that line what because well, how many people have ever been in a job where no you're contractually obligated to hunt santa claus Therefore, if you're hunting Santa Claus, then Santa is real. You know, the concept wasn't too foreign to me. It is I, uh, to learn more about their supernatural. I've done a few uh, other jobs like this, so yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I forget about. I forget that sometimes. How could I forget this scene? But yeah, sometimes I forget. Let's talk about we, the park we, scene a little the, bit. Oh God! I was like with the with the other edit, we cut some of this out didn't we no, no we didn't cut any of the park scene but we did have matt redo the narration because if you'll notice it's me doing narration here at the beginning That's of this right. because we had a whole we had like two scenes planned around the park we had a whole thing where matt was going to like intro the scene like all right we're going to look for people that, who, who may have seen santa claus and obviously kids are the ones who claim to see santa claus so he was going to stake out a park. And then we had a whole other, th like we had a mm -hmm. whole interview set up with this kid, a kid we knew, by the way, we didn't just grab a random kid at a park, but um, it, it was so windy and cold that day that we didn't realize all of the audio was pretty much worthless to us until we started editing. And so out of all the scenes we worked on, we put the most time into this one we threw every trick in the book we knew at this thing and we still couldn't get the audio to work. And so finally it was like 3 a.m. And I was like, I'm just going to record my own narration. No. And we had Matt do a new written narration when we kind of did a second edit. But I, I wasn't, I almost called Matt like at 3 a.m. Be like, hey, can you come to the studio tomorrow? And I was like, it's 3 a.m. I'm not going to call him. I'm just going to do it now. Yeah, the, it was not it was cold it was windy i think we only took like two two or three takes anyway we probably should have taken more but we it was so cold that day yeah it really was i mean you can kind of tell how windy it is from from the way matt and kyle and Shal are walking but yeah i i liked how we edited around the issue it just sucks we couldn't get because the content's really funny yeah you just can't hear it yeah, like, I think we did the, the kid we worked with. He did a great job. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. If you listen here, uh, there's a split second where you can hear the audio because we're behind the playground. And if we shot the interview like in this area behind the playground, it probably would have worked. But I had a visual that I wanted that audio be darned. I yeah. guess. But if you listen, you can actually kind of hear me laughing in the background at something Matt does here <laughs> next. So uh, take a listen to that team heads to a local park to interview a witness to say thing. We got one. This is it. Well, after a, a small bit of confusion, um, we went, we, we, we were incarcerated uh, for a little bit, and we had a, a lengthy trial with Miss Richard. But we, we proved our innocence and we so, will yeah. continue. 15 minutes worth of footage in that lost, uh, park. Funding. And uh, we ended up using maybe 15 seconds of it. 
Uh, that's how bad the wind was and how bad it sounded. But uh, I'm not gonna lie. This next like sequence of I was gonna say, like do you want to? Sequence is gonna be great. Like, I was gonna say, you want to talk about some of the ideas behind this? Sure. So, each, when we were filming this, we had each of them pull up something on their computers, talking about like, I think Matt's was how to get out of legal issues. Um, Sal's is, um, what does his say? Post incarceration oh, syndrome. He was up like men- in the four months. But he, he was, was also up- he was also looking up vacation well, destinations. Men- <laughs> and the Shaggy. Yeah, and the Shaggy's in there too. That was kind of his idea. I don't idea. know why. Incarcerated. Yeah. And uh, a majority of the staff has. And Kyle was looking for a new job. Yeah, that was a real job on Indeed, by the way. I don't know why none of us applied for that, but that was a real job. It was probably out in California. Yeah, probably. I think it was for BuzzFeed. It was only paying $15 an hour. I, was gonna say, I think it was for BuzzFeed, wasn't it? Something like mm-hmm. that? I don't know. I don't know. It it is because he makes a joke about it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I know. His, yeah, a joke, joke a joke tribe. coming up here. Yeah, I still believe that we'll find the truth and Saint Nick. All right, you're good. That, is that was cool. another cameo by me. Yep, sleazy producer in the background doing his job. In preparing for our investigation, we found a small suburban house that had been reporting a lot of recent paranormal activity. Could this oh, be little the little cameo from, from the demon? Okay, Jones yeah, coming up is one of my favorite shots in like five, four, three, two, one. There's definitely evil in this house. Sorry, I'm First on our lineup, of it's just so perfect because Matt's like evil in the south. Yeah, <laughs> ban over and it's... I think it was one of the first things I did to like sell you guys on this idea because that just I think it was when we started thinking about this again. I think I walked home and saw that. I was like, eh, there's something here, I think. But yeah, these next uh, few bits right here are also yeah. some of my favorites. Be away, perhaps, if you're standing for Christmas music. And two, for any good uh, fun, you need bait. Now, unfortunately, somebody, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to name names. You, right there. Yeah, you know, yeah, don't think I forgot about you either. Now, we had the best cookies that one could buy. Thin mints from the Girl Scouts. Unfortunately, we only have coconut eggs now, <laughs> and we only have four. <laughs> Pending our investigation, just the fact that <laughs> Kyle looked under the plate under the for plate. more cookies, <laughs> and then proceeds to yeah, and then proceeds to bring the coconut eggs out, act like it was a hard job. <laughs> Runs his head or hand across his forehead like he's sweating, and then puts a thumbs up like he did a great job. Yeah, I love how he points to the camera too. So, like they they know yeah. they've been filmed this whole time, and yet they still stole the thin mints. I like how just taking them all at the end. Yeah, <laughs> these are mine. The escalation between those two was was perfect. I think for that whole bit, and uh, this next bit coming up, this was something we mm. thought of on the day. This wasn't in the original script, but, like, Matt came up to me and was like, can we do, like, something like this? Like, we're running away from our past investigation or something like that. I'm like, if we have time, and we, and we did. We did have time, and I'm so glad this made it in. But. Did you hear that thing? Oh, yeah. It just said his soul is his. Oh, yeah. That's the top of my God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you get the Ouija board? No, oh, I lost it. You left it. Yes, I don't want it. Ah! We... <laughs> board, so we have this. How do you play this game? Mm-hmm. With all our gear sorted, we began our investigation. To this day, I don't think any of us know still how to play the game. Yeah, I haven't tried it since then. We waited patiently. I don't think they even actually played it. 
We waited. They well, okay, so waited. they sat there for a while. Because okay, so this whole bit, I said, well, let's just do like ten minutes, and just kind of intersplice it. Matt was like, no, nah, man, I want to do the full like Matthew, half an hour or hour, hour I think minutes. it was. And so I just let the camera yeah, roll, and I think they just sat there for like an hour. And finally, in that second bit, when it got dark out, they were like, let's try this Pictionary game. So like 55 minutes of that second hour was them playing Pictionary. And I'm like, all right, we should probably do something that works with the script here. And so then like the last five minutes, they just started freaking out and getting mad. Yeah, no shit. This scene had, I think this scene kind of slowed it down. Yeah, I think that's why we kind of cut that. And this one, the, 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 oh, there, for I a second. Yeah. You see anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, it's a squirrel. No. Oh. It, it's Santa. Sometimes he, no. he uses misdirection. No, it was. Probably, I truly it, believe it in this scene, well. Matt. Totally think Santa is outside right now. Like he he nails a lot of what these next scenes coming up. Take up the GoPro. Then charge the battery. He's very method acting type person. Well, we talk about method acting. He he just got done with like Peter and the Star Catcher, where he has like a British like. I'll be sort of I'll uh, accent and everything, and coming good. up, he like he like <laughs> lets that show for a little bit here. Oh yeah, I've been using all day, but I have to say, I love this scene. I love how he chose starships. Because who's listened to Starships any time recently? I don't know why we thought of Starships. What's in the back of a Lincoln Mercury? You help me with that one. I have it on my iTunes account. I think that proves my point more. Say you Spotify of Lion. I mean, sure, it's close to Ireland, but it's not entirely in Scotland. And it's kind of hard to believe that they would be there. I'm just saying. Listen, man. Santa is real? I can't stand by while we look for. What was that? That was freaking laugh. Or not laugh, but scream. I think we did that in one take. We were kind of like, I don't know if we can get better or worse than that. Yeah. Oh, we could have definitely gotten it first. <laughs> Another cameo by the film crew. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of see our shadows in this one. This is one of the last things we shot. You could just kind of tell we were all getting tired at this point. Because like 80%, like 90% of this was shot in one day. We did a little bit the weekend before, but it just, because of scheduling. Mm-hmm. There's, <laughs> there's this British coming out there a little bit. Matt, your British is showing. The beauty of this scene and logistics that went into it are just phenomenal. Well, I, and I love how we pulled it off. And it took a ton of takes, but yeah, it, it could have gone a little bit smoother. But for some reason, we were like, "Well, crap! Now Kyle's got to put the GoPro back on, or something like that." But yeah, it took a few takes because well, you took the GoPro footage for this part. Yeah. Right. <laughs> This scene. This, specifically, Kyle. Just open the house. Just a bottle. Put that time I wrote hot mayonnaise on myself in the chamber. Oh. <laughs> Why? That Why is a one? that is a Kyle original right there. 
Well, it's a deep, deep cut from a different, like, YouTube series. Yeah. And that stream, just like, Aye. Kyle, <laughs> what the heck? Oh, talk about something that took multiple takes. This whole sequence was just the worst. Because we talked earlier about how cold and windy it was. You can tell at this point it's really windy. And I told Matt before we went out there, I'm like, all right, when you kind of lay down, I'm, I want to get like 60 seconds of footage just to be sh safe. And I'm laying there on the ground getting the brunt of the wind. And I look at the clock on my phone and I'm like, it's only been 10 seconds and I already hate this. And I'm like, there's no way we're making 60. So we hit 15 seconds and I'm like, give me five more seconds, Matt. You're doing good. And we didn't get close to 60. I have to move forward in my quest to pump the starting line. And now with Santa's gift, I'm more ready than ever. I think if you had the whole full 60, though, that would have dragged out quite a bit. Yeah, we got pretty lucky that it timed pretty well. I'm not saying a full 60 wouldn't mean. Yeah, I would have mm -hmm. should have faded out sooner or something, but uh, there's the original or the, the basic font. Yeah, it was. I had to make it go in there one time. Um, but yeah, that's uh, this was kind of our first uh, film as a, as a group, really. Uh, we hope to do some more possibly as well. But uh, yeah, what'd you think of the experience mm -hmm. overall? No, for my first, like, because I don't really do the whole film thing quite a bit. I'm more of the, I do a lot of the sports stuff. When I was in college, I did a lot of sports stuff for the school. So doing this was different. And just the thought of, like, rearranging how you shoot your scenes. Like, you don't have to necessarily shoot your first scene first and go down that line. You can shoot your last scene first, your first scene in the middle and your ending scene somewhere in between and just the, the way of doing it was a good perspective gave me a good amount of experience because I didn't have any of that a couple of narrative film classes we did take were a sh just a hot mess so I didn't really learn a whole lot from that but this I learned a lot from so and luckily I was working with you and you knew what you were doing and working with Kyle and Matt and Sal and we, we do quite a, we hung out quite a bit together, just friends. So being able to joke around with them and work on a project that I'm, I always talk about broadcasting and whatnot with them and Kyle was a broadcasting major as well. So being able to work on a project all together like that was, I don't know, just super fun. And the editing till 3am was fun, yeah. even though it was till 3am and I had to work at 8am the next day. Um, but yeah, it, this project, I think ended up even better than I could have hoped to be honest. Cause like I said, we, I, I had come, come up with this idea like late 2019, early 2020 or something like that. And you can come up with how many ideas and very few of them will actually become reality. And just, it was one of the least stressful sets I think I'd been on in a while, to be honest. I don't know what was so different about it. I I can I probably list a bunch of reasons, but just you guys were willing to be flexible, and a lot of the great funny ideas came from you guys, which I think helped and all that. And it just yeah, it, it turned out better than I could have ever hoped. So I'm um, I'm super happy about that. Right, and I think it I think it was good to have me. Kyle and Matt in on the writing and the script writing process of everything from the get go. Cause we knew what the vision was. Yeah. We knew where you're looking for and not saying that there's ever similar to writing writer's block, but sometimes you just need an outside perspective, like suggestion, not all the time, but you know, you just need some help. And we knew where the vision was going and where we wanted it to look like, or we wanted it to look like. So I think that was to our advantage. A lot of the times that can be a disadvantage though, but for us, we knew each, we all knew each other really well. So we play to our advantage and I, it shows in the finished product for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super fun overall project though. 
super glad we did it. Yeah, yeah. I hope we do more in the future here maybe, but uh, no promises. But uh, until next time, this has been the first edition of Omni Commentary. Uh, we'll uh, check you next time.